Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mason and let's hear some stories from Reddit. But before that, don't forget to press the like and subscribe so you won't miss any videos in the future. Or maybe leave a comment down below. That really helps the future of the channel and means so much to the effort that I put in every day. Now let's dive into the stories. First story, two months in the customer service job, and it finally happens. I work for the company that employs electricians for small jobs. Part of my job is to answer the phone, take their information, type a quick summary of the job, and then open the work order for the electrician, which they will then use to contact the client and do the requested work. So the municipal elections are happening, and it is Friday afternoon. Suddenly I get a call from a new client, who tells me that the light fixture at the polling place nearby has a light fixture that is not working. The light that is not working is located right above the booth. After getting all the basic information, the call starts pretty much like they all do. The people are not able to see the numbers they are writing on the tickets. Can you send an electrician to fix the lighting? She says in a flustered tone. Sure ma'am, since this seems to be urgent, I can give you the information of the electrician who is currently nearby working another job. There is also another electrician who is currently here, at the office. I can ask if they are free to take a work order right now at this point. I am interrupted. Yes, this is very urgent. Go and talk to the one who is there right now. We are located about 15 minutes away from the polling location, so this might be faster. Considering that the electrician who are currently on the job can't really just leave to do another job. So I take the phone with me and head toward the break area to talk to the other electrician. After walking around the warehouse, I find the electrician talking to his phone most likely with another client. I do some gesturing to him, asking if he is free after his call. When I get the answer, I update the woman who is on the phone with me. The electrician is speaking to another client right now. But as soon as he finishes his call, he can call you and at this point I am interrupted once again. Just take his phone and tell him that this is an emergency. The election is surely more important. There is, and I am being serious here, a 10 second silence, as I am feeling confused. After collecting my thoughts and realizing that she is being serious, I finally answer, I am sorry ma'am, but I am cut short yet again. At this point her talking gets so fast and even more confusing. There is a lot talking about how I would not want our company to end up on the local newspaper. She actually mentioned some bigger ones too. But oh well. For not offering the proper service and thus ruining the election. After more silence and awkward answers I finally give her the information of the electrician who is working nearby. With the promise of also following throughout with the one who is currently on the phone. She also asks for contact info of my supervisor, which I also give her. Because I have to. So the phone call ends and the electrician comes over to the office. After finishing his call, I give him the summary of the job and as I am doing that the electrician who is with me gets a call from my supervisor. He collects his equipment and leaves to do the work order at the polling place. After an hour or so he returns from the job and I ask him how it went. Apparently the woman had contacted pretty much every company in the area. That offers the electrician services. So when our electrician arrived at the venue, there were a total of six guys from different companies and already running around fixing a single light fixture. In the end, the light bulb was not screwed in tight enough. The janitor of the venue had changed all the light bulbs before the booths opened, leaving that single light bulb loose. What I heard is that the woman had threatened multiple local companies at the site about their slow response and unprofessional behavior. I know that the municipal elections are a big deal, but I have never before thought that the organizers are under so much stress that they would act like this. I guess it was just a matter of time before I encountered a customer like this. But the scale of this, damn. Second story, entitled Lady Always Gets Rotten Salads. This story belongs to my beautiful wife, who is a deli manager in a major regional grocery store in our area. She runs a tight ship and likes to keep things clean and up to date. So imagine her surprise when a customer, let's call her the entitled lady, reports that 8 out of 8 box salads, think macaroni salad, potato salad, that sort of thing she had just bought were all bad. Entitled lady, I just bought these 8 salads and every single one of them was spoiled and inedible. Beautiful wife, I'm sorry to hear that. It surprises me, do you have them with you? I'll be happy to exchange them. Entitled lady, no, I threw them away, but I have the receipt. Beautiful wife looks over the receipt, 
It is recent, like a day or two old, and all in order. Against her better judgment she errs on the side of good customer service, and replaces the eight salads just on the basis of the receipt. That was Monday. Come Wednesday, beautiful wife is working on the fryer. When she hears a familiar voice telling one of her team I just bought these eight salads and every single one of them was spoiled and inedible. Beautiful wife steps forward and says, I've got this. And the entitled lady does not look pleased to see my wife again. So, still all bad. Did you bring the salads back with you to exchange? Entitled lady, no. They're too disgusting. I threw them all away, but I have the receipt. Beautiful wife, the trouble with that is that I can't send your receipt back to my vendor for credit on the bad salads. I need the salads to do an exchange. Entitled lady, you didn't need them last time. Beautiful wife, actually, I did. But I took you at face value and ate it that time. That is not something I'm inclined to do again. Entitled lady, starting to rise like a cobra ready to strike. How dare you address me like that? Don't you know how good a customer I am to this store? I want to talk to the manager. Beautiful wife, well, sweetie that would be me. No spoiled salad to exchange. No exchange. At that, entitled lady storms off in a huff. Beautiful wife checks with the rest of her team. It becomes clear that at least twice in the last week the entitled lady had hit the deli during their busiest times and gotten new salads without having brought back the purportedly bad ones. That's at least 20 for free salads over the last couple weeks. Right about then, busy store director comes storming over with the entitled lady in tow. What's this I hear about you insulting our customers? Beautiful wife. Beautiful wife, what did she tell you? Busy store director. How I refuse to exchange a product that she doesn't have. Or that over the last two weeks she is the only person to complain that any of our salads are bad and oddly enough every single one she got from here was bad. Or that we already gave her dozens of free salads. And that is more than enough generosity for one deli. I'm not saying she's scamming us, sir. But if she doesn't bring the spoiled salad back with her to exchange, there will be no more exchanges. Busy store director. I see. As you were. Then to the entitled lady, you're lucky I don't ban you from the store for this behavior. The entitled lady realizes, she won't get any further today, and sulks away. Beautiful wife makes sure to train everyone on her team to require the old product be returned for any exchanges. A couple days later, she is coming out of the cooler when she hears a familiar voice. I bought these eight salads the other day and every single one of them was bad. It's a different worker who wasn't there the last time. Different worker, did you bring them back with you to exchange? Entitled lady, no, they were gross. I threw them all away. Different worker, I can't exchange them unless you bring them back. Beautiful wife smiles. Entitled lady, not even just this once. It's an honest mistake. Beautiful wife steps out into full view. Not even just this tenth time. Now get out of my deli and don't ever come back. The entitled lady fled and was never seen in those parts again. Third story, entitled man steals from customer. This story belongs to my beautiful wife who is a department manager in a major regional grocery store in our area. It is from that time last year, 2020, when buying a roll of toilet paper might require a bank loan. On the day in question, the store had finally gotten some TP in to stock the shelves with, but was limiting it to one package per customer, including employees, since several members of her team were in early to help restock before they opened for the day. They had all set aside a package each to purchase before they left for the day. About mid-morning, a young lady was lucky enough to snag the last package on the shelf, put it in her cart and continued shopping. A few minutes later, she was shopping near beautiful wife's department in the backmost corner of the store. She turned to choose an item from several options on the shelf, and as soon as she did, an entitled man swooped in and took her cart, and took off toward the front of the store. Startled, the young lady yelled out, What are you doing? That's my cart. The entitled man did not slow down a bit, but just yelled back before turning the corner. Nope. I need it more. I've got kids at home. And was gone. The young lady was frozen in shock and disbelief. Beautiful wife had seen this from her department, but knew they would never catch the guy. He would ditch the cart and self-check out the TP and be gone before they could get there or even get someone to pick up a page. That TP was plain gone. She calls her team together, and they make a quick plan. One of them goes to find the cart with the rest of her stuff in it. They found it. Another of them retrieved a couple of the packages of TP they had reserved for themselves. Beautiful wife approached the young lady, comforted her and asked her to come over to beautiful wife's department. Now because of the nature of beautiful wife's department, she has a register there and can ring customers up. 
Before the young lady realized what was happening, they had her rung up with two packages of TP. All the bags in the cart ready to go and asked how she would like to pay. She nearly started to cry. After she paid, beautiful wife told her, now take these things to your car and secure them before you continue shopping. Okay, the young lady agreed and left rapidly. Beautiful wife's team shared the remaining packages. And at no time during the shortages did any of them run out of TP. First let me express my appreciation for all of the warmth and generosity that has been shared with me and beautiful wife through this post. You are an amazing community, and I am honored to participate in my small way with it. Thank you all so very much. I shared all of your love and appreciation with beautiful wife. She remains clueless to how awesome she really is. Oh it was nothing. Anyone would have done the same. You can already predict the rest. While she wasn't one to acknowledge it directly or verbally, I know beautiful wife very well and I know that gleam her eye. She was really touched by all of your hugs and well wishes. And for that I thank you twice. Fourth story, for you, we can hold it. One of the jobs I work, and the only one I'm working at the moment, thank you COVID-19, is for a video game store. If you know anything about video games, you'll know that the newest generation of consoles, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, are damn near impossible to find. They released this past November, and my store's PS5 waiting list is still a few pages long. Xbox, being less popular, have actually been sitting in stock at my location for a while. Last week I was doing my normal work, when the phone rang. I looked at the caller ID, and it was my local hospital's surgery ward. I know because I'm waiting for a surgery right now and have had some calls from them for appointments and such. I answered and the gentleman asked if we had any Xbox consoles, or if there was a waiting list. I said they're here, come on down and grab one. It turned out he was doing a 12-hour shift, and we closed before he got off. He asked if we could hold it. Now, policy is very specific on these consoles, and such hot ticket items. No holds, no exceptions, period. I asked if my caller ID was correct, and he was calling from the hospital. He said yes, he works in the ICU and he's on his break. I asked when he could come in. Earliest would be a few days away. I told him it would be here. End of discussion. He's working in a hospital during the pandemic. He's getting this box. And my manager can fight me over policy if he wants. I wasn't supposed to be there the day he could come to pick it up, but I happened to cover a shift. He asked if I was my name when I greeted him as he walked in. I said yes, and we did the transaction. I told him how happy I was to be able to do something for our healthcare workers besides just saying we appreciate them. He seemed like he really took to heart that we do appreciate everything they've done. I told the story to my supervisor when he got back from vacation. As soon as I said he was a hospital worker, my supervisor interrupted with so you told him we'd hold it, right? Last story, customer felt insulted because I didn't assume she was old and more. A busy day at retail hell at my supermarket I work at. For starters I already was exhausted doing my manager's work that they didn't want to do themselves. I had to deliver safety supplies for COVID to a church as a donation from our store that took two trips to deliver everything. As soon as I get back and hop on a register, and I only had about 15 minutes left in my shift. Just wanted to clear out the line since it was busy for the memorial weekend. As soon as I was ready to close off my register after a couple of customers, I told the last customer in my line that I will be closing after her and she will be the last one in my line. Me stupidly enough and exhausted. I requested the lady in my line to help close my line off or to put the cord across my lane to show that I was closed off. I told her she could move a mini display cart that had wheels on it. Not that heavy or anything to block off so that no one else could enter my line. As soon as she started to move the display cart, she stopped and said I'm not doing that, I am 70 years old. And I have shoulder problems. You shouldn't be asking me to do that. So I immediately apologized and said that I am sorry. And as soon as I started ringing her up she told me she was extremely insulted, and that she needed to speak to a manager immediately, and I should never ask a customer let alone an elderly 70-year-old with shoulder problems and knee problems to do anything of that nature. I apologized again and said that I was unaware and did not want to assume that she was incapable. I was exhausted and did not pay attention to her attributes or her age. She demanded to speak with my manager and wanted to tell her that I should be retrained and put a sign up that I am closed instead of asking anyone to move something to make sure my lane is closed. I realized I was in the wrong about asking someone to move something to block me off, but I got so used to having a lot of different customers do it. I chose the wrong person to help me out with that. I said sorry and she said that it doesn't mean anything. 
and that she needs to talk to a manager. In my head I was like good luck because the store is busy, and the manager on duty was doing other things so she could honestly just wait there until someone shows up. I was so upset because this lady made me feel like shit, and degraded for not assuming that she wasn't capable of moving a small display card on wheels. Was she a Karen and just wanted to let her shitty day out on me, and complain to make her feel better about herself? I honestly meant no harm. She didn't even take my apology, and I told her I made a mistake and she said it's not even about that like what the heck.